So, we should probably address this, like out of the gate, I think. Yeah, we should. Because this has got to stop. <laughs> like the, I don't know, I don't know the, how it happens. I don't know either, but it keeps happening, and we, we have to address this, so... Well, it's, it's the, because it's, it's it's getting to the point where it's kind of it's it's off putting <laughs> like it's weird. Well, well, it's weird, but I don't think either of us really care. But well, but when we go it's, places, it's the together, elephant in the people, room. Yeah, it's the somebody's, elephant in the room. So somebody's yeah. gonna notice if you're watching this, or somebody's gonna notice if we're up. Church we're we're dressed the same. <laughs> we're we're dressed exactly the same, and we do this without realizing we're doing it. We did it yesterday. Yesterday, same clothes. The exact same colors, top to bottom. At least today, you got some khaki slacks on. I got some blue jeans. Yeah, yeah. So that I mean, there's a little bit of a difference today. But yesterday, it was exactly the same thing, like from top to bottom. And it's to the point, and we've been laughing about it in the office to the point to where Stephanie, uh, our assistant, is making fun of us and telling us we sound like a couple of ten year old girls ten-year-old talking girls about what we're, wearing, and, what know, we're wearing today. I didn't know whether to joke that I'm I'm the half pastor over here that I'm I'm sitting here trying to like as- ascribe to be you, and so I actually. Brought- <laughs> I actually it's drive by the office and peek in to see what you're wearing, and then I run back home because I live really close, and I change quick. Like yeah, because I was I was here super early this morning. I was here like at seven fifteen, trying to get some reading done on a commentary. So I had to have been the first person to get dressed. Yeah. This morning, between the two of us. Yeah. But I don't know how this. I don't know if we're gonna have to start texting each other and be like, <laughs> "This is what I got going." <laughs> Do just, something else. I just figure we roll that we we get along a lot of other ways. Evidently, All right. we dress the same. Evidently, we dress the same. So. So there's that to start with. That's not really what we're talking so about. So we got today, that going for us, yeah. which is nice. <laughs> like, uh, okay, so what, what are we talking about today? We're talking about Tanzania. We're talking about what God is doing in the world, right? And, talking and about missions and just some exciting news that you've gotten over this past week. and, and Oh, yeah. And just kind of, yeah. I mean, we're going to talk about your news, we're going to talk about a bunch of different pieces of it, but kind of a little bit of even in a compare and contrast of mm-hmm. your experiences over there, some things you've told me about, and what I've kind of learned or appreciated about what you've told me and maybe even how that informs some of what we see going on in Lincoln, Nebraska and maybe some things to aspire to of, of, of what we're seeing in Tanzania. So. Yeah, it's crazy. The, the bishop, now this is a mouthful. You ready for this? This is a mouthful. The southeast of Lake Victoria Diocese of the Lutheran Church of Tanzania. Like that, say that ten times fast, right? What's, what's the acronym for LCMS there? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, actually, it's really, it's off-putting in English. Okay. Because they, they have to do it in Swahili. <laughs> and so the, instead of LCMS, they have KKKT. The T is important because otherwise it's three Ks in a row, and well, that's really they're... bad in English. But it, in Swahili, it comes out to the, the Lutheran Church of Tanzania. Okay, right, right, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but in Swahili, the, the first letter, like, so their abbreviation is KKKT. <laughs> there's a, there's completely a different cultural context. Yeah. So completely just... different culture. It's okay, you know. <laughs> Sometimes these things don't translate well across languages, but that's that's what gets put on the sign because that's how you abbreviate it in Swahili. But but yeah, so this is the southeast of Lake Victoria Diocese. So they have a different structure than we have. Uh, they have the the more European style hierarchy. So they have bishops, right? And uh, that has to do with how they were evangelized. They were early on evangelized by German and like uh, Finnish. Uh, missionaries, mm-hmm. Lutheran missionaries, and so they have that northern European kind of structure um, where they have bishops over dioceses. From, from what right. you told me about it, it reminds me about reading about the Church of Finland, for all of you that have read about the Church of Finland. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, for all of you who <laughs> stay awake at night reading about the, <laughs> the Church of Finland, yeah. But anyway, you, you're fortunate to talk about kind of what's going on, but I, I'm excited to hear about your news. You should tell people about the news and the, the call you got this week and and yeah, I'm, I'm pushing. Gonna, okay, okay you're pushing a little bit, but I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to build. I guess it's too big of a front porch, but I just it's. I, if you were to compare it to what we've got over here, the southeast of Lake Victoria Diocese would translate to the Nebraska district. So mm-hmm. this is what they call their districts, right? And I got uh, a message from the bishop of the southeast of Lake Victoria Diocese, and he informed me that over the past year they have planted thirty new Lutheran churches just in their diocese alone. I mean, imagine if the Nebraska district reported we've planted 30 new churches in one year, you know? I mean, I, mean, I know we've got a bunch of Lutheran churches in Nebraska, but I'm still trying to picture, like, where, where do you put them? And I mean, they... it's crazy, right? 
and, and not even just where he put him, but just just to see that level of growth. I mean, yeah, I, I should have looked it up. I didn't think to do so. But how many churches have we had start in the last five years in Nebraska? I don't know. But see, okay, you want to talk about the number five? They're they're on track <laughs> in that district. He told me they're on track to plant five new churches in the district just this next month alone. They're already they've got everything lined up. They're slated to open this next month alone. It's crazy what we're seeing going on in parts of Africa right now. It's a you know, sometimes I think as Americans we talk about Africa like it's a country. It's a continent and it's enormous, right? And there's lots of different countries. And if you look at different countries in Africa and you see what's going on right now with the the work of the Holy Spirit, it's like it's like a thunderstorm. Like it's like I've never seen the Holy Spirit pour out like this in my whole life, definitely not growing up in the United States. I've never, ever seen an outpouring of the Holy Spirit like this. People are coming to Christ in huge numbers. Churches are being planted. It's crazy. And I saw it firsthand for the first time when I was over there a few years ago. I guess now it's, gosh, it's got to be three, three and a half years ago I was over there for the first time. And, and I was seeing this firsthand, and I was part of these groups that were going out and evangelizing. I was also doing some teaching of future pastors um, in their training center there. But, I mean, we, we baptized over, like, uh, 1,700 people in two weeks. Yep. I mean, how many pastors baptized 1,700 people in their entire ministry in the United States? And we baptized 1,700 people in two weeks. Here's the thing I remember. So th this would have been the year before you got here because I remember either you told me the story about it on your visit or sometime when we were talking as yeah. uh, before you get ready to take the call. And and the, the thing I remember about it when you're just describing the dynamics and what's going on and how the Holy Spirit's just pouring out is you said you'd be there and you had your trucks and the people there would recognize the trucks of these these are the preachers, these are the, the evangelists. They recognize the, the, the church body's fleet vehicles. Yes, yeah. the, the vehicles you've got yeah. there. And there's such this sense of urgency of yeah. Jesus is there. I know Jesus is there. i got to find this. And the people are lining the, up, like crawling over the, each other to get baptized. Yeah, the last time I saw kids run the streets like this when a van pulled through it was for the ice cream truck you yeah. know what i'm saying but they're running for this truck because they can make sure they don't they're afraid they're going to miss out on getting baptized they were afraid they could miss out on being baptized and they wanted to be baptized because they heard we were coming because the people in these villages talk to each other you know like this is their lives they trade they they go have a beer together or whatever so they talk right and so they they knew we were coming that was the word on the street and mm -hmm. when we pulled in they just, they mobbed us. The one day that I baptized the most people at one sitting, I baptized two, over 200 people. And they were pushing me up under this uh, acacia tree, which is not real uh, comfortable. And they, because they were crowding me and pushing on me because, again, they were afraid, how long is he going to be here? He might leave and I won't get baptized. And then they begged me to stay. I'm going to go back down the street. I'm grabbing my cousins. And I'm going to bring them so that you can baptize them. And to say baptism, it doesn't really, it doesn't really encapsulate what's going on over there. It's jarring. It it's a it's a full conversion. I mean, when we take um, uh, our kids to the baptismal font at this church, we are already Christian families a lot of times, and we're bringing our children to Christ. And it's a beautiful moment, and it's a beautiful picture. But it's not this jarring, because we're already Christians. Yep. Like, we, like our, fam we, our family is already a Christian. So we, we're doing this as a continuation of walking in this faith as a family. But if you've ever seen somebody truly convert from an old way of life to a new way of life, it's jarring. So they, they want to get baptized, and they've got these, like, it's more complicated than this, but for the... Well, I don't want to go into their religion. Let, it's let, a voodoo necklace. Let me jump in, though, because okay, I, yeah. I know you want to talk about the voodoo yeah. necklace. And, but yeah. what's in my head right now is just the transformative power of the Holy Spirit. It's crazy to the watch The transformative it. power, and it's going to be in First Peter, Second Peter, out of which when he talks about the way that we're going to change our mind, change our thinking, you know, putting off the old self. It's a complete. It's a complete and, and change. It's just, it's just I'm going to completely shove everything away of what I was because yeah. here is Jesus. And here I'm getting baptized. And then to your story about necklaces, the fact that it's a physical well, I mean, example this, of... They have a religion. 
Yeah. It's I mean it's it's voodoo, but they have a religion. And that's that's oversimplifying it. So that anybody at home is like, don't be oversimplifying somebody else's religion. I could give you an entire other podcast on the nuances of their of their traditional faith, but there's a lot of uh, uh, fearing spirits, you know, in nature. There's a lot of ancestor worship. There's a lot of that stuff going on, um, and they they do see um, witch doctors. Like mm-hmm. if you have a problem, you go to the witch doctor. And so to sum it up, for simply, I would just say it's a voodoo necklace. Okay. Um, it, it is more complicated than that, but they have these voodoo necklaces on, and then they take them off before they get baptized. And at the end of the day, um, one of the evangelists would make a fire and burn all the voodoo necklaces. And then when after they're baptized, they're like, uh, give me a Christian name. They look at you and they say, give me a Christian name. Give me a Bible name. So you're like, you're just going through all your Bible names. You're like, okay, your name's now going to be David. You're going to be Jeremiah. You're going to be Amos. You're, you're going to be, uh, you know, you kind of steer clear of Judas, right? You know, yeah. you, you clear, you're going to be Peter. Not, not, you know? too many, not too many Jezebels. Or, yeah, not too many Jezebels. You're going to be Paul, right? And you try to think of all these uh, Bible names because th- when I say it's jarring, they're taking off these voodoo necklaces. They're burning them. They're putting a cross around their neck. And they're changing their name. And how biblical is that? You go from Abram to Abraham, Saul to Paul. Uh, you're Simon. Now you're going to be Peter. And and you're you're watching the same God that changed so many people's names throughout the, both the Old and New Testaments, changing these people's names in front of you. I, it's I mean it gives me goosebumps. It's, well, it's crazy. It's, and it's the it's the it's the new creation in Christ. You're putting off the old self. And literally yeah. taking the stuff and burning it, their old self. You have a completely new identity in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then when they, I mean, I, I remember, okay, so I remember one mayor of a town. He was the mayor, and, and he had all these voodoo necklaces on, because, in part because I can't remember which family member it was. I don't know if it was his mama, his daddy, his granddaddy. Somebody was a local witch doctor. So he was steeped in the traditional religion of his people and of his tribe. And he had all this stuff on, and he was a he was a real political leader. Like you could tell, people were listening to him. You know, everybody in the town knew who the mayor was. He's that guy, right? And he took it all off and replaced it with a single cross. And then after he was baptized, he broke down crying, and he got up on this stump, and he announced to the entire village, "Everyone will be in church this Sunday." You will be here on Sunday. We're going to hear the word of God because an evangelist is going to come and talk to us about Christ, and we're all going to be here on Sunday. It's crazy to watch it. I mean, it's crazy to watch what's happening over there. I know. It's it's nuts. And I'm not making it up. It sounds like I'm making it up. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it for myself. But you know what it was for me the first time I saw this stuff? It was an affirmation of all those stories in the book of Acts where you say, well, 3,000 were added to their number in one day. 5,000 were added to their number in one day. And you're like, really? You know, really? I can't talk to my neighbor, Bob, about Jesus. And he's like, yeah, I should totally come try to check out your church. And you're like, that you're not going to be And there. then he goes you know? and gets another beer and, gets, yeah, and it, goes back to watching the game. And yeah, then, and yeah. You, you know it's not going to happen. You know, And, and so it's, it's so different living in our context and trying to lift high that cross and we're doing it we're doing it as pastors we're doing it as a congregation we're lifting high the cross here in lincoln nebraska but even in a place with such huge family values traditional american values like nebraska it's still so much more difficult to actually uh point someone to the cross and see the evidence of the the spirit's work you see it every day but not in at, at this kind of level. And you and then as an American, like I would always go to the book of Acts and be like, three thousand were added to their number in one day, and I'm like, Well, that's nice. Five thousand were added to their number in one day, and I'm like, But really? Well, not that I don't not that I don't trust the word of God, but I'm just saying that's so unbelievable well, is what I'm trying to say. And what, how I always thought about it with Acts is I looked at it and was like, Well, it's nice he was doing that then. That's what I'm saying. It's nice he was doing that then. He, I don't see evidence of that now. And now we're talking about spots where he is doing that now. And you're seeing it. And you're you're seeing it with your own eyeballs. And it's incredible. The Spirit really does do this stuff. It's just right now the Spirit is pouring like a downpour, like a, like a summer thunderstorm. The Spirit is pouring. 
on the continent of Africa. It is amazing what is going on over there. And so they planted 30 new churches just in this last year alone. This is good. It's also a challenge because um, now they got to get evangelists out to these churches into these pulpits because these people are converting. They're being baptized. They're changing their name. But they literally know nothing. Yep. So the next thing that's got to happen is the is this preaching, and well, um, it's, it's it's Matthew twenty eight. Go there. So there, but so somebody might ask, what are they converting on the basis of? All we're telling them is the story of the God who created the world, who sent His Son, because God so loved the world that He sent His only Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. We tell them about how Jesus was crucified. We tell them about how He was raised on the third day. All we're doing is basically telling them the creed. Yep. All we're doing is preaching the creed, and people are converting. But th- there's so much more. Well, it's, it's the go, therefore, and baptize, but then you have to but, teach. But then there's teaching, right? Yeah. It's, it's Matthew 28. It's t- you got to baptize, then you got to teach them, right? Well, and 30 new churches, that means there's logistics. That means the things that right. you need to have to right. make sure that somebody's getting to the point so that, that they're actually well, and that's the, the that's the problem is getting to the point because they don't have, like, they have some major highways, uh, the Chinese are building all of them. So if any of you have connections to the U.S. State Department, I think we need to invest more heavily in Tanzania. I don't think the Chinese should steal the show. But anyway, they've got a few highways in the country. But a lot of these roads, they're not like our roads at all. And I'm saying that even as a guy that complains constantly about the state of Lincoln roads, right, <laughs> that there's all these potholes. But at least we've just got potholes. They've got washed-out cow trails. And, and it's hard to get between point A to point B. And some of these places are very rural. They're way out there in the, in the bush. And so trying to get there is a challenge. So what they've done is they've gone for a cost-effective solution for these evangelists as a church body. So they buy uh, motorcycles, little moped things like mm-hmm. dirt bikes, and a helmet for you. I mean, that's all you're getting <laughs> is a moped and a helmet. And you got your Bible, right? And and they that that allows you to navigate these roads on these dirt bikes, and they're they're cost effective. They're a thousand U.S. dollars a pop, and that's pretty that's pretty good deal. Um, I don't know what it would cost to buy the same kind of bike here. It might be a little bit less, but what uh, if you don't know this? If you're buying an automobile in a in a foreign country, uh, we actually get a much better deal as Americans on automobiles of any sort uh, than you do in other places. So like in my wife's native Brazil, the markup yep. is insane. And so there, I think there's, I think what they're running into is a little bit of a markup, but it's still a really good deal in terms of that versus a car, which would be even slower because you can't navigate those washouts and stuff like that. So these, these bikes have been like their way of doing it. So they buy these bikes for a thousand bucks a pop and then they are able to staff these pulpits and have more people hearing the gospel they're doing baptisms they're teaching the already baptized and this is how ministry is getting done over there with 30 new churches i he sent me the bishop sent me these pictures of their training center Mm -hmm. they've got 30 new evangelists that have just been commissioned by their church body. So they've got they've got the guys ready to go to go out to the each. Yeah. Of so here's how churches. it works. Yeah, yeah. So here's how it works. So the evangelist goes out first, and he's preaching and, and teaching at these new church starts. Okay, until they've reached sort of a critical mass in terms of and a, and, and, a, and a critical level of maturity. Mm-hmm. New Christians may not understand the concept, for example, of tithing, so that you could support uh, a whole ministry and stuff like that. They don't understand these stewardship principles. So you're preaching, you're teaching, you're trying to get the church to a critical mass, you're trying to get them to a critical point in their maturity where they're ready to accept a full-time pastor. And then at that point, they send out the fully ordained pastors. So these um, evangelists are like a commissioned minister of the gospel Mm -hmm. and we have that in our own church body right so but uh, these evangelists are vitally important to this to this church growth movement that's going on over there and so uh they send out these evangelists 30 new churches 30 new evangelists that they've got commissioned now they they trained them they went to school for this 
Um, they've taken some classes, but then the, the next thing that happens is they, they need these, these uh, bikes. And yep. so he reached out to me. Um, I've been doing some fundraising. Mm-hmm. I, one of the sources I went to, I've been to some private donors. I've talked to some pri- uh, private donors, both within our congregation and also outside of our congregation. I got uh, some commitments that way. I also went to the Faith Foundation and talked to the Faith Foundation and said, look, this is the situation. And I explained it. They continue to show themselves to be generous. Well, they, they're all about ministry. Yeah, I, mean, they they're, I mean, they, they want to see ministry happen. And they don't want to see it delayed, right? So they gave ten grand to this effort. So we're now up to sixteen grand. That means we can buy sixteen of the needed thirty uh, motorbikes to get these evangelists out of these pul- pulpits. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to be sending um, uh, an email out this week to the congregation, and I'm going to be talking about it on Sunday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, if if folks in the congregation want to partner in this ministry the money that, that, that they would be giving goes directly to the preaching of the gospel and people being baptized. And there's not a lot of opportunities, quite frankly, that I can think of. We talk about the ministry that we have that's ongoing. So uh, when people are supporting our pastoral ministries, when they're supporting the teaching ministry, people are coming to Christ that way. People are being baptized that way. Not in these numbers. If you want to talk about where God is already at work and you partner alongside with where you see God working. He is working here. He is working in a huge, dramatic way. Well, he's, he's working in, in, that in, in a huge, dramatic way. And I, I think also it's, we, we, we talked about this with, at our elders meeting last night. One mm-hmm. of the elders made a comment about just the, the fact of, of, of recognizing that this is an opportunity for us at Faith as a congregation, as a, as a community, to support them, to be able to be support, supported, international mission, international mission, and, and and just the beautiful beautiful side of that because of the way the Holy Spirit's at work. There. If you if you think and about the fact that if you supported this effort and you you uh, bought a motorbike, yep, right, the fact that from Lincoln, Nebraska, you could be directly responsible for hundreds of people being <laughs> baptized, yeah. It's kind of a no-brainer. Well, you know? well, think think about it from our context of what we're putting in an offering plate each week, and what what our what our what our you know level of income is, what we think yeah. that, and if we're thinking about ministry and the idea of oh a thousand dollars to be able to get another commissioned minister to the spot that needs to get to. Yeah, I mean that's that, that that's that's, that's, that's peanuts for us, but and you know it's. I try to I try not to get frustrated when I look at our own context because we've got some things going on here that are so different than what's going on there. Yes. You know, and it when when the, when the focus here has in some ways kind of lost some of its focus when when we're we're talking about brand loyalty to the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, uh, but we're we're distracted constantly from the work of the gospel. That that can be something that that I try to process in prayer because sometimes we've got people who are more concerned about something that was a tradition for them. You know, we talked in our other podcast about those algorithms that get stuck in your <laughs> yeah. brain, you know. We're more worried about a tradition or we're more worried about what what we've always the way we've always done it around here. Or we're or, you know, again, you talk to your neighbor Bob and he's got a way he goes through his week and yeah, I'll totally check out your church and stuff like that. It, the, the work here is is ongoing, and it is happening, and God is changing people's lives through this ministry of faith, but it's just so much slower. And so I think there's a need for us to stay in prayer and to stay vigilant where God has planted us here in the United States. But what if, see, here's the, this, this is for me, it's the big what if, but what if while remaining faithful where God has planted us, where the work is slower, where it is more difficult, where we got to work really hard just to see what God does in one person's life or one family's life. But what if even while we're being faithful here, we could have a partnership overseas where it multiplies so much faster? To me, that's a no-brainer. To me, that's a no-brainer, too. I've got another what if. Okay, what's the other what if? If we're talking about just kind of thinking about different cultural contexts and different ways that mm-hmm. the you know the Holy Spirit's working in, that's obviously above our pay grade about understanding how God's working, where he right. works, and... You know the the ways that the Holy Spirit's at work to through conversion or through whatever happens to be. But my my what if a little bit is and and I'll just start with me of just admitting that as I sit and think about it and I get goosebumps thinking about the 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 way you describe Tanzania and the the amount of people that are that are 
wanting to push their way to make sure that they don't miss out getting baptized, or the the mm-hmm. mayor that's willing to stand up and take off all of his you know voodoo jewelry and then mm-hmm. proclaim to the whole town we're all coming to hear God's word. Yeah. What if me sitting here in Lincoln, Nebraska, had that same kind of conviction and, and visceral reaction to what God's doing in my life to be able to say. I'm sitting here, and I'm I'm sitting there on the best news I've ever known. Anybody's ever going to know about who Jesus you're is sitting on the winning lottery ticket, man. I'm I'm, right? si- I'm sitting on Jesus Christ. Yeah. You're sitting on the cure for and cancer. eternal life. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and and I'm sitting worried about how my Huskers going to do this fall. Yeah, and, like, and I'm sitting there worried about like, ah. worried about buying fireworks <laughs> yeah. for the Fourth of July, or I'm sitting about yeah. all those other stuff. What, when am I going to throw all my stuff off, right? And, and stand up and, and be the mayor of my community, whoever yeah. that is, and say, hey, we're all going to come listen to God's word. Yeah. Because it matters. It does matter. Because without it, you're going to die. Right. And and when you see the, the changes that are happening over there, and you see this complete 180, it's a complete change of direction. It's amazing. And um, our brothers and sisters over there, they don't have an American GDP and economy behind them. And I know that we've been through some rough times here with our economic system with COVID and everything else, and inflation's on the rise and stuff like that. I get all that, but we still, comparatively to the, literally the way anybody else in the world lives, we have it so much better. Yep. And so $1,000 for us is a, is a commitment we could make that would mean the difference in how many Starbucks coffees we bought, you know, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't break our system at all to do this. And if we can partner with our brothers, because they're calling out for our help. Yep. The spirit's going so fast; they're struggling. They're like panting to keep up, and they're calling out for help. And I think we have an opportunity here to partner and to help our brothers and sisters in Christ, because it's happening, and the spirit's doing it. They're not doing it. They'll they'll be the first to tell you. The bishop will tell you, we're not doing this. It's literally just. And you look at the history of missiology. This is, I mean, this is kind of going long, but you. You look at the history of missiology, right? We sent missionaries, Europe and America sent missionaries to different parts of Africa for 150, 200 years, and it was like nothing. Like nothing happened. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Running into the brick wall. Bang running, bang yeah, bang. running into the brick wall. Nothing. Small little groups here and there, but nothing. And all of a sudden, now, you know, you talk about not knowing what God is thinking or why he does what he does or why the Spirit's over here or why he's over there. All of a sudden, just bam! And it's like it's all happening like right this second. Fire in their head. Yeah! It's, now is the moment. Now is the time. So if we're going to partner with our brothers and sisters, now is the time to do it because it's happening. And it's exciting. Um, he... The bishop invited me to come teach again in May mm-hmm. of 2022, um, and so uh, we talked about it last night at the elders' meeting. They 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 have approved that leave uh, for me, and um, sounds like a job for the associate pastor to <laughs> to, to uh, man things here. But uh, I'm going to go over in May of 2022, God willing. I mean. I don't have a crystal ball, and COVID has now thrown me for a loop so bad this past year that now I just, I go, what I hope will happen, what I pray will happen, if God is willing, right? It's, 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 it's humbles a little bit of that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's humbled me a lot, i got to tell you. And so uh, the, the, the hope is, the prayer is, uh, this is what the invite is from the bishop in May of 2022. I'm going to go over there personally, and they don't have their own seminary, so they rely on... Uh, PhDs from the United States to come over and to do some training. So I'm going to go over there and uh, we're looking at two subjects. We're looking at uh, teaching preaching Mm -hmm. to future pastors and we're looking at teaching uh, the Pentateuch, so some good Old Testament biblical literacy um, to future pastors who are going to be uh, pastoring churches. And so, uh, and they have a similar model to ours. So like we have our school in Touching Hearts they have a lot of parishes where there's a church, there's a congregation, but there's also a school attached to that ministry. And so a lot of these pastors are going to be in similar positions to you and me. They're going to be pastor of a church with a school and uh, an early childhood center. So um, this is important work to, to make sure that we're training these guys well 
so that they feel prepared and equipped to go out and, and be the pastor that they need to be in these communities. And so um, I think it's just a really neat thing. I mean, clearly God's gifted, gifted you with the gift of being able to teach in a variety of contexts, a variety of ways. And I know that you're fired up about this. That oh, the man. The Spirit's leading you lead to this. And, and just to be in this, be in this spot where you can spend, they, spend two or three weeks working with guys that are going to be... They don't pay me for this. No, they don't, yeah. And I would do this for free every day and twice on Sunday because when you think about, again, what the Spirit is doing, you think about the opportunity to partner and, and to say, I had a hand in, in making sure men felt prepared for the pulpit. They felt prepared for the office. I would do this for free on my own dime yep. any day of the week. It's just an honor to partner with our brothers and sisters. Well, and to help connect them from the, the creed to a more further, broader understanding of, of right. who Jesus is, how he sustains us in this life. Well, you know. Jesus said you got to be like, you know, the guy that brings out of the storehouse treasures both the old and new, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about how we prepare men for the pulpit, we gotta, we got to have men who are ready to go into the storehouse every week and bring out from the treasure trove of the scriptures these treasures both old and new. And they've got to be ready to preach on that text week in and week out. And, and that's what we're going to be working on. So it's all exciting stuff. Uh, I was just going to throw out two thoughts to leave everybody with, and then we can maybe sure. wrap it up. I mean, I, I think one is just the, the for those of you listening, those of you that are that are part of the, the faith community here, or otherwise, you know, this is an opportunity to support a really neat international mission, you know, financially. If, if it's something that God puts, you on, puts on your heart, I'd, I'd certainly ask an appeal that, 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 that maybe that's something you're interested in and mm -hmm. to, to support, you know, getting these evangelists, their mopeds, their bikes, so they can get out to their, out to these new churches. And I, I think secondly, maybe just, yeah, I, I started with me a little bit of just examining my own heart and examining what God's given me. And, and the, are we focused? Are, are we focused? Are we really yeah, thinking we about focused? using Tanzania as an example of, am I really putting mm -hmm. my money where my mouth is about, I know who Jesus is. He's given me this gift of faith. Am I willing to put off that old self and really talk about who he is with yeah. my neighbor? Yep, that's what it's all about. So we're, we're we're sitting on the cure to cancer. You can't say you love somebody and you don't give them the cure to cancer. Jesus is salvation. He's he is life eternal, and and we've got him. And he's got us. Thank God, right? Yep. Thank God, he's got us. So, all right. Well, uh, we'll come back to you in a couple of weeks with another episode. I know. What we're going to be talking about, I know we're going to make every effort to dress differently, <laughs> and, uh, and we'll see you next time. See ya.